This video is part two of my Autolab video series on setting up Autolab to be able to study for your VCP or VCAP DCA exams. Um, in part one, uh, I went through how to obtain Autolab from labguides.com, how to set up VMware Workstation to be able to use uh, the Autolab package, populating VMware Workstation with all the Autolab shell VMs, and then starting up the Autolab NAS VM. The NAS VM um, has a share on it that you populate with all the software that's going to be used by Autolab. And in this video, we're going to go over how to populate the NAS VM with all the required software. In the Autolab deployment guide, uh, there's all the software that's required to set up the Autolab. We're going to be populating the core lab requirements and a few of the additional components. So the lab that we're building is just for vSphere 5.5. I'm not going to be uh, doing any upgrades at this time. Um, Autolab does allow you to build earlier versions of vSphere, such as 4.1 or 5.0, and then so you could practice upgrades to uh, 5.1 or 5.5. Um, we're just going to be building a core vSphere 5.5 lab. So to do this, we're going to go out and collect all the software, and then we're going to populate the build share. So let's take a quick look just at the build share. So this is on the NAS, and this is the build share. And all of these directories will contain the software that's required to build out the different pieces of the environment. Um, for this video, we're going to go over populating the ESXi 5.5 folder, the Vim 5.5 folder, the VMware Tools folder. We're also going to be adding some of the extra software such as the SQL Management Studio, um, the vSphere CLI software, and um, just setting it up so that we can automate the deployment of Autolab within Workstation. So I've downloaded all the required software as stated in the Autolab uh, deployment guide. Um, and I've just placed it in a build files directory on my uh, local PC. So we're going to start with the VMware software. And, um, here I have the PowerCLI, the VCLI, the vCenter ISO, and the ESXi ISO. Now so what we're going to do is we're going to place the files that are needed onto the build share. Now you don't just drop the ISOs onto the build share. You have to actually extract the ISOs and then copy the files within the ISO to the folders on the build share. So to extract the files from the ESXi 5.5 ISO, we're just going to mount the ISO, and I'm just using a freeware um, ISO mounting program uh, from the internet. Um, there's several of them available. Uh, we'll just open and view the files. Then we just select all the files, and we're going to copy these files. And then we're going to place them in the ESXi 5.5 folder on the build share. It's going to take a few minutes to copy the files. And then once they're copied, then the ESXi build share folder is ready for to be used by Autolab. Next, we'll copy the vCenter installation files. Same thing, we're going to mount that ISO so that we can get to the files that are contained within it. We're going to select all. Then we're going to copy these files and we're going to replace we're going to place them on the build share in the vim underscore 5.5 directory. It's a much larger set so this is going to take a few more minutes to copy. Um, a lot more a lot more files there a lot more, a uh, lot larger than the ESXi um, directory. So then once this is finished copying, we'll have both the vCenter and the ESXi files that are needed for Autolab. The vCenter ISO is finished uh, copying. We've copied the information to the, the build share. So now we have the ESXi 5.5 directory and the Vim 5.5 directory populated with the installation files that are needed. 
Now we're going to copy the PowerCLI and the VCLI installation packages to the build share. These get copied to the root of the build share, but they need to be renamed after they're copied. So once they they're finished copying, we're going to rename them and really you're just removing the version and build number from the file name. So now we need to populate the VM tools directory. We're going to use the VMware tools that are in that come with workstation and they're located in C program files x86 VMware VMware workstation um, there's a VMware tools ISO or a Windows ISO that contains the Windows VMware tools uh, much like we did with the ESXi and the vCenter ISOs we're going to mount this ISO so that we can actually grab the files from within the ISO and copy them to the VMware the VM tools directory on the build share. Once that's complete, that's all of the VMware software that needs to be added to the VM to the build share um, for Autolab to do the core uh, vSphere lab. Now we'll add the Microsoft software that we need in the build share. First we're going to add the SQL Management Studio and we just copy that to the root of the build share. And then we'll copy the Windows Server 2003 to the root of the build share. Once the Windows Server 2003 ISO is copied to the root of the build share, we'll need to rename it. Um, and we're just going to rename it uh, Win2K3. So now the build share is completely populated with all the software that you're going to need to build a core vSphere 5.5 uh, lab using Autolab. Um, now we're going to adjust the automate.ini file to match what we want in our environment. So on the build share there's a folder called automate and within that folder there's an automate.ini. Just open that file and make the adjustments. So I've already adjusted the time zone to Eastern Standard Time, which is my time zone. Then there's a few options in here. VC install. You set that to the version of vCenter that you want installed. Um, Autolab supports 4, 5, 5, 1, and 5, 5. You can also set this to none, which won't install vCenter. Or you can set it to base, which will install the SQL native client and do a couple other tweaks to the vCenter server, but it won't install vCenter. So if you want to practice a vCenter installation, um, you know, installing SSO, inventory service, web client server, and vCenter, you could set this to base and then do the vCenter installs yourself. I've set auto add host to true, so not only will it build vCenter 5.5, but will it, it will add my host automatically to the vCenter install. You could set this to false again if you wanted to practice adding host to vCenter, um, you can set this to false. Since I have it set to true, I will have to make sure that I build my ESXi host first in Autolab before I build vCenter. I'm going to have it go ahead and build the data stores. 
but I've set build VM to false, and this is to build for building a Windows 2003 nested VM within the Autolab environment. Um, I'm actually going to do that l manually myself later. Um, if you did set this to true, you'd also need to provide a product key for that VM. If you were using Vue or you wanted to install Vue as part of Autolab, then you can adjust those options here. Uh, we did not populate the build shares with everything that was needed to do the view installs. So we won't be doing view installs as part of this. Again, we're just building the core vSphere Autolab environment. So once the automate the automate.ini file has been adjusted as, as you want it, just file and save. And now the build share is completely populated and set up for us to begin using Autolab and deploying the Autolab VMs. In this video we've covered setting up the build share with the VMware and Microsoft software that you need for Autolab. Um, we also covered setting up the automate.ini file um, to automate the build uh, as you want for your environment. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, visit my website www.vhersey.com. Follow me on Twitter at HerseyC. Or check out the YouTube page and leave a comment on the video if you have uh, any comments or questions about it. In the next part of this video series, we'll actually start building Autolab, the Autolab VMs. Uh, we'll start with the, the DC and the ESXi host and then build the vCenter server so that you can actually start practicing within Autolab. Hope you enjoyed it. Look for the next video soon.